This is Ken Loach's home city of Bath. It's a tourist magnet, attracting millions of visitors every year. They come for the Georgian architecture, the Roman history, and the designer shops. At the end of their holidays, the tourists will pack up and go home. But across the southwest, there are more than a thousand families who have no place of their own. They're faced with eviction, living in temporary accommodation, or even sofa surfing with friends and family. Ken Loach has been making controversial films throughout his long career. I'm going to have to I'm ask you to explain to you a situation and you don't care. His latest, I, Daniel Blake, tells the story of a man beaten by the benefit system. Kathy Come Home tackles homelessness in a typically brutal and honest way. That film was made over 50 years ago. I want to find out if people are facing the same ordeal today. But sofa surfing or sharing someone else's home isn't always possible. Just a short walk from Bath's designer shops is a hostel. It's home to 11 people who have nowhere else to go. People look down on people for being homeless, but it can happen to the best of us. Lorna's 36. She's been living here for six months. What's it like at Barnabas House? Because you've got similar people from a similar background all together. It's actually a really nice place at Barnabas House because we're all in the same position. Everybody helps each other out. If I said to you now, what does home look like to you? It's sort of like, it's like a hug around you. It's safe, it's, it's cosy, it's secure. And what advice would you give to our contributors? I'd say to them, be angry. It's not your fault. You're in this situation because the system doesn't work. The system is generating this poverty and this cruelty and they know it. 12 million people watched Kathy come home and were shocked by its devastating portrayal of homelessness. It showed how an ordinary family could lose their home and in that sense nothing's changed. Plus it was made when there was a huge housing shortage again no change there. So although it's been over 50 years since Ken Loach's iconic film was first shown on TV it seems that Kathy's story is still being told today. So why does the National Portrait Gallery want to raise all that money for another portrait of another dead white guy? It was painted by one of the greatest artists of the age, Sir Thomas Lawrence. And he was born here in Bristol. Today, Bristol's probably better known for street artists than portrait artists. But this is where Sir Thomas Lawrence was born. And it says so right here. So it's almost like he photoshopped them in the 18th century. Yeah, I reckon. If you can bring out their individuality and their quirks even, and still please them, that's the idea, isn't it? If you're being commissioned. But if you're not being commissioned, you can draw them warts and all, can't you? I'm scared now. Oh. <laughs> His reputation grew. His flattering and polished style made him one of the most important portrait artists of the Regency age. Bristol is regarded as one of the most vibrant places to live, but for many people, it's a tough and challenging place with real areas of poverty. I grew up in care and know what it's like to feel isolated, and with the recent closure of Kids Company in Bristol, this has left people with similar backgrounds to myself feeling angry, but most of all, vulnerable. So I'm outside the island, which was formerly the Kids Company drop-in centre, and as I stand here, it takes me back to the conversation I had with Sapphire and JD about how important this service was and about how this was the focal point of new beginnings in their life after being in care and being stood here now and thinking about their experiences, to know that they can't come here anymore is a true loss to our city. The question is, where do we go forward from here? I decided to come back to Bristol Bridge later in the day to see if the young guy was there. All around, there are people enjoying a night out, and that kind of sums up Bristol. Success and desperation living side by side. He's not here. I just wonder if he's okay. Has he managed to find a bed for the night? Has somebody taken him in, looked after him, or is he still walking around Bristol with nowhere to go? How does it make you feel to know that tonight potentially a kids' company service user will be sleeping rough 
in our beautiful city. I know that, that there are one or two people, and Esther has cited one or two people that have uh, been found, for instance, sleeping under uh, Bristol Bridge. I'm absolutely uh, determined that we do all we can. I say you can never guarantee that somebody won't fall through the cracks. The full impact of the closure of Kids Company won't be apparent for a very long time. People like JD and Sapphire and many others that use the service will need to find help elsewhere. The help is definitely there and they need to just find it within themselves to trust people who's trying to support them. And that word trust is going to be key to getting through this. The Bristol Old Vic, 250 years old. Seven and a half million people have come to see shows here over its lifetime. But that isn't everybody's idea of a great night out. For the same price, you could be at the Rovers. Or see, having a great day and a half at the zoo. Or just oddly, bouncing around for a couple of hours. I feel as though I've got a stake in this place, but the question is, what has the old Vic really done for us? Like many Bristolians, I don't come here very often at all. It feels like theatre's just for the arty, rich elite. But if that's the case, how has it survived all this time? It's huge fun, but is it the best use of our taxes? This kind of work is absolutely essential at this age, getting in this early to teach um, children about ways about expressing themselves and being confident and, and being able to walk into a room and mastering their own kind of physical bodies, their voices. Let's go! Ha! 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 Since I was shy since, um, to go on stage before, but I'm not. You shy? No chance. I didn't have that sort of thing growing up. I always thought theatre was just not for the likes of me. But then I got a part in a play called Looking for Obama, which was set in Bristol and performed right here. Looking for Obama was a risk for the Bristol Old Vic, and they actually took a risk on me because I've never done conventional theatre before in my life. And I think what it gave me on reflection was really, really powerful. It was actually about that sense of fulfilment and sense of purpose and being able to look ahead and say there are things that I could actually do. So with hard work, dedication and a few more of these, the Bristol Old Vic may be around for the next 250 years.